I always wondered how Razor managed to keep himself entertained being stuck on Greed Island with so few players ever actually embarking into the game, much less actually reaching him. But then one day, it all made sense when I found this picture that cleared everything up because apparently Razor is a subscriber of the New World Review, which grants him regular Hunt Hunter content straight into his YouTube feed. Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga, and it's Hunter Hunter time again, as we continue our in-depth exploration into the world of Nen, this time focusing on the discipline of emission. Now, as always, if you are new to the concept of Nen or just need a basic refresher, then this video is available, which is something of a 101 course on the overall art form, as well as using it as assumed knowledge in regards to this video. But onwards to the wonderful world of emission, and this discipline consists of the fairly basic mechanic of being able to separate one's aura from their body. And that might sound a bit odd at first because that technical definition would, at face value, appear to be part of other affinities as well, such as conjuration and transmutation, which are both capable of technically separating aura from the bodies of the user. However, a key difference is that conjuration and transmutation go on to transform aura into an object or substance. Meanwhile, emission is all about raw aura output, which can be surprisingly difficult because one's aura naturally wants to remain within its vessel and the process of separating it actually goes on to decrease its potency, which only gets worse and worse depending on how far the ore is from the body. And for an example of this, we can look at Mr. Gon because he actually uses a form of pure emission as part of his Jajunkin series, specifically with the attack known as Paper. And this basically sees Gon gather his aura in a similar manner to that of his trademark rock technique, which is a form of enhancement, except that with Paper, Gon launches his aura directly at an enemy as a form of projectile, a sort of glorified Hunter Hunter Kamehameha. And it's quite a powerful, albeit straightforward technique because Gon is an absurdly talented child thing. However, However, due to the fact that it is a use of pure emission, despite putting the same quantity of aura into the attack as he does with rock, the result of paper contains only a quarter of the raw power. And a lot of that is attributable to Gon not being a natural emitter, but compounding that is also the general fact of reduction in aura potency post separation, even if you are a natural emitter. So with that in mind, a sort of tip top emitter is an individual who is capable of separating their aura with minimal loss of power, as well as over great distances. And no, it's not always about destructive power as we will thoroughly explain and there is a ton you can do with emission that goes far beyond a simple energy blast. In fact, in my opinion, the best uses of emission that we've seen in the series go far beyond that basic idea. Before we hop into things though, according to Hisoka's personality framework, an emitter tends to be impatient, not particularly detailed oriented and quick to act in a volatile way. They're also quite impulsive, although they allegedly tend to calm down much easier from their volatile actions as opposed to say enhancers. And this is another mixed bag from the University of Hisoka. I think certain aspects can apply to certain emitters, but there's really only a couple that I can think of that fit this bill perfectly. To start the examination off proper though, we kind of do have to delve into Razor, who was probably the most memorable emitter in the series, whose aura ball actually mimics the idea of Gon's paper projectile. However, in the case of Razor, what we see happens to be this idea perfected. Razor can generate exceptional quantities of aura condensed into a much smaller package that deals damage several orders of magnitude higher than Gon could ever dream. And not only that, but Razor can emit his aura near instantly and have it travel much further from his body thanks to his sporting prowess. And he also has superior control of targeting. And this attack is the quintessential pinnacle of pure emission. But Razor himself makes far more complex use of this affinity as he is a game master of Greed Island and directly responsible for all of the emissive needs of the card game. Now, very notably, this likely does not include generating the cards themselves, which is more in line with Conjuration. And I'm sure that someone else handles that. However, he would be responsible for the emissive mechanics found primarily in spell cards, like a company, for example, which releases aura that is then used to teleport players to a location of their choosing. And so with that in mind, Razor displays both the most simple and yet the most complex uses of emission in one pretty stacked gym teacher wrapped package. And I really don't think that anybody else in the series has even come close to demonstrating a higher degree of mastery over emission than Razor. However, we have certainly seen more diverse usage. And with that, I would like to now immediately turn to Melody, another natural emitter with a very, very cool ability known as enchanting music in which she can relieve fatigue and in some cases, even cure the illnesses of those listening to her music. And this is achieved by Melody emitting her aura whilst playing her flute, which then reaches and activates anybody caught within a certain radius. And it can also cause listeners to hallucinate as well, depending on how much of her heart Melody puts into the performance. So the technicalities of the heart suit are unclear, but I would hypothesize that the music played, possibly specifically through her flute, is obviously a condition placed on emitting her aura in this matter, as is Melody's own passion whilst playing, which is important because without that second condition, this would be quite supremely powerful. 
downfall, especially because it also seems to take effect if her music is broadcast. But in the end, it's just a really fascinating take on pure emission, very much the opposite of destructive energy blasts and also an intriguing use on adding conditions to raw emission. But for some more, let's say very basic examples, we can now look at both Franklin Bordeaux of the Phantom Troop as well as Bloster of the Chimera Ant Troop. And both of these emitters have very similar abilities, which sees them emitting their aura into much smaller, but still very potent ways that go on to mimic gunfire and thus transform both of them into incredibly deadly weapons. Now in Franklin's case specifically, he chose to plonk an extra condition on his Hatsu, which is that he voluntarily cut off his fingertips and made it so that he could only fire after removing them, which as he quite correctly thought, would lead to an increase in power of the overall ability due to the limitation. So for what is effectively an incredibly basic use of emission, Franklin has has very much maximized his own personal output and is a master of Nen in his own right, as are all members of the Phantom Troop really. Bloster on the other hand, he's, well, he's Bloster. However, I refuse to go any further without recognizing our lost protagonist, Leorio, who after an awfully, awfully long time, we discovered is a natural emitter with quite a funky Hatsu being remote punch, whereby Leorio makes a physical punch to no impact and then emits his aura to replicate the punch at a target of his choosing, which emerges from an emitted wormhole style thing. Now, it's kind of a vaguely defined ability and we're mostly left to deduce how it works on our own. And as a result, there is sometimes quite a bit of confusion surrounding it, with many believing that Leorio opens a Nen wormhole and then punches through to hit a target. Whereas in reality, what he does is meet the condition of a physical punch, assumedly infused with aura, and then that aura travels to its destination and manifests itself as a fist and arm that strike a target with the same physical force that Leorio initially put into his own punch. And fascinatingly enough, this is one of the first examples in the series that we have of a heart to being copied because Jing Freaks after being hit by this immediately understood the technical implementation of it and he would go on to use it in his favor to defeat some assailants that Pariston had hired to try and make Jing use his quote unquote true Nen abilities. And very notably, this example of copying power is not Jing's Hatsu. This man is just so talented that he is able to copy very basic usage of Nen and he also even expanded upon Remote Punch by sending multiple emitted fists, which is a nice escalation that Leoria would assumedly be capable of if he decided to invoke it and if he had the aura reserves to do so. Once again though, it is a very nice take on pure emission, especially for those who are more physically inclined because you would think that brawlers would be quite incompatible with emission due to the fact that it is most effectively used at long range. But no, a proficient wielder can just brawl from a very long distance, which is actually kind of terrifying. I mean, just imagine if someone like Uvagin had a Hatsu like remote punch, the world would be doomed. And a further twist on punchy punching can be found in the character of Lynch Fulboko, who is confirmed to be a natural emitter and her ability, body and soul, has Lynch ask her target a question and then punch them repeatedly with each punch managing to deliver an answer to her inquiry. And I would strongly hesitate to call this pure emission because there does seem to be elements of manipulation spiced in. And the results of this, I guess, can be referred to as some sort of truth punch. But emission is still there because it does require Lynch to project her aura either into or onto the target in question. Continuing on though, we come to another beloved character in the form of Pockle, who gives us a seemingly very basic example of emission, which is him emitting aura to use as an arrow for hunting and or combat. This is a lot trickier than it seems though, because Pockle isn't just using raw emission, he's also calling upon transmutation with the arrows as well, which you can see very clearly in the example of the red arrow, which upon contact with a target will burst into flames. So Pockle effectively emits his aura in the shape of an arrow, but also transmutes it into the properties of fire, which is very intriguing actually. The fact that he can transmute his aura after it has left his body. And so he is probably a much better Nen user than he would generally receive credit for, especially because transmutation is far from the natural ally of emission. And I mean, look, it's not the worst possible discipline that would be conjuration, but still the fact that Pockle is making effective use of an affinity two spots removed from his own is very noteworthy. With this in mind though, the natural ally of an emitter is obviously enhancement and manipulation, especially manipulation actually, because that opens up a whole sub genre of Nen, which is Nen beasts. So for example, Shachmono during the Orkney City arc utilizes this brilliant combination in his 11 black children Hatsu, which sees him emitting his aura into the shape of these bizarre doll soldiers and then manipulating them to act as a small personal army. They are very limited to simple commands, but this is how natural emitters go about creating Nen beasts because the other standard method would be to use conjuration, but that of course is not really an option for emitters. Nor is it required because they can emit some pretty fantastic things like Knuckle for example. Hakawara is a Hatsu that makes use of two Nen beasts being APR and IRS, both of which are emitted existences and then manipulated to perform their own purposes. What is interesting though is that emission is generally 
considered a release of raw aura. However, in many, many cases of these emitted Nen Beasts, they are clearly given form beyond that of aura. But an example of an aura generated Nen Beast would be something like Xenozoldic's emitted dragon. That thing is clearly just pure aura, whilst APR, IRS, the 11 Black Children, and many, many other abilities, including Razor's 14 Devils, at least have the illusion of being something solid. And quite probably the grand champion of this would of course be the 100 type Guan Yin Bodhisattva, wielded by Isaac Netero. Although I should say that there is potential that this Nen Beast is conjured, just because, well, it's Netero we're talking about. Although as a natural enhancer, emission would be much, much easier for the former chairman to use. However, there is a definite emissive mechanic at play in regards to Zero Hand, which is probably the most destructive force of raw aura emission that we've seen in the series, which focuses every last drop of Netero's extensive aura reserves and fires it in a condensed blast of doom, which I guarantee would have obliterated anybody who didn't happen to be a Chimera Ant King at the time. Anybody else though? Woof, you're in trouble. But yeah, I think that gives us a pretty good overview of a mission. I will once again encourage all of you not to just think of it as like a key blast style ability, because even pure mission holds so much more potential than that, as we have seen with Melody, Leorio, and the crazy card mechanics of Razor. However, I will say that I feel like through my anecdotal experiences, emission is one of the more underrated disciplines, which is a bit of a shame because it's actually stupidly versatile and has a great, great ally with manipulation, allowing the easy crafting of Nen Beasts. And not only that, but an emitter can also dip into enhancement for their own physical protection if necessary, whilst also emitting their aura elsewhere. So it provides very capable and balanced offensive and defensive options. So yeah, good emitters of the Hunt Hunt world, we salute you and your emitty emittiveness. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you're keen for some more Hunt Hunt content, and I know you are, then please do go and check out some of my other videos or even subscribe to the channel for regular Hunt Hunt glory delivered straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the New World Review and I'll see you next time.